Good morning, tubers. Welcome back for another adventure. I don't know if you guys remember the 125 that I picked up in, up in Kingston. It turned out to be a low compression engine, and when we did some um, work on it, we figured out that the exhaust valve was warped. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is pretend we're starting right from scratch and we're going to uh, replace that bad exhaust valve. So at this point one has determined they have low compression and they got to figure out why. Well, you got to get the head off the engine. I mean carburetor, get that off, right? This plate here, you want to get that off. When you get that plate, you want to take a look inside, make sure that, you know, things are moving around and so forth um, before you even pull the head, right? Once you do that, there's a bolt that goes through right, right there. And you take that out, just as I'm doing now. Obviously, some of this is all pretty loosened because I've had it apart. You've done that. To get the head loose from the engine, bolts, bolts, right? At this point, you're looking at the uh, timing gear. I recommend moving it till it's top dead center and it's top dead center when this is right there. But you do, once again, you take the uh, three bolts out of this right and a lot of times you got to pry a little bit this is cheating but you know you got to kind of pry that to get it loose pop it off now your chain is loose i would put a wire on the chain um so it doesn't fall into the engine case especially if you're tilting things around you have the engine completely loose from the frame anyway i'd hook a wire around the timing chain you want to um pop when you pop this gear off, the chain once again will be loose. Put the wire around it. Um, this bolt's got to be out, right? Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. At that point, uh, you pop that off once again. Wire on the timing chain so it doesn't fall in, and the head will slide off. At this point, the head's loose, it's sitting in front of you. You want to make note of a few things. First of all, you want to pay attention to this. This is a little thing that holds the cam bearing. It's spring loaded, so you got to make sure you load the spring because when you slide these things out, and I've just put the bolt on it, right? So you slide that out at this point. You could get that loose. You slide the other one out. And maybe you'll hear the click when the spring load lets go here. Right, this little thing. Once again, you want to have it spring loaded. Because that keeps the bearing in one place. Right? You don't want that just spinning when you nearly you wear the head out. Right? Easier if you grab these with like... Um, needle nose, right, they come right out. So, at this point, right, we can access the head. Now, what happened to this? Um, to me, it looks like they ran it hot and they warped the exhaust valve. There isn't a lot of material there, right? So, it wouldn't take much to warp it, um, just imagine running hot, this thing is glowing relatively <laughs> red, and uh, you know, um, you shut it down with it opened, and you could just picture it just moving a little bit, or slightly closed such that it touches one side and then slides um, a little bit, you know, all by thousands. And the next thing you know, the valve warps and it doesn't close all the way. So now we got to get this out of here. And there's a really fancy tool to do that with. You can buy this kit. They go for about 25 bucks. Basically, it's a giant C-clamp. 
and the open end allows you to push this in then you can get the retainers out of the way um, and drop the valve so drop the valve through the head and you're good once again we're working on the exhaust valve make sure you get the right one that's exhaust there it is so we want to get this guy out of here let me show you how you set this up so what this thing is is basically an oversized c-clamp or a c-clamp and this piece you push in on the face of the valve and this pushes down on that retainer right there uh, then you could reach right in and pluck those two little um, it pushes down on the washer and then you could pluck those two little retainers out and you release the tension the whole thing comes up and the valve comes right out right pushes right through the bottom um, once you release the pressure just quickly this whole thing would work a lot better if uh, the clamp, if this C clamp was clamped in a vise, right, and that way it was held upright, and you know I wasn't balancing it with my hand or leaning it against anything. Anyway, I tightened this down. Once again, that's pushed up, right up against the face of the valve, and as I tightened it down there. Hopefully you could see the washer went down and I could kind of reach in and grab those retainers. I'm going to tighten it down a little more. It's a little easier to get it out of there um, if the thing's um, all the way down. Right? Gives you a little more room. Set the opening here such that it's easiest for you to work it with because, once again, you got to reach in there with needle nose to grab those two little retainers. The retainers are out, and you can see I'm working in a big tray, and I'm working uh, on a kitchen floor that's a light wood. Um, my wife would not be pleased with me. I have to finish this before she gets home. But I'm doing that on purpose. Um, these retainers are easy to drop, and then you got to be able to find them. So set yourself up in such a way allowing for that and uh, it'll make your whole life a lot easier I released the spring tension and you guys could see now it's just a matter of taking the stack right out of here better done with two hands rather than one right but there you go back to as I said make sure you could uh, <laughs> find everything right and the valve is out. I don't know if I'm spinning it, if you can see that it's warped. Sometimes uh, if you roll it on a table, you could see it a little better. It wasn't warped much, just enough so that the compression uh, dropped down. Now hopefully I ordered a set of valves and they sent me the right ones. Here's the old valve, here's the new valve. The new valve looks more substantial. Hopefully. Uh, I think they sent me the wrong ones. Yeah. Looks like they sent me the wrong ones. Shoot. Well, that ain't good, is it? So I put the new valve in. And it seemed to go in, and it seems like when this one opens, it's going to miss. Not by much, but it looks like it's going to miss. And it looks like it's below the surface. So you know what? I'm going to, uh, oh, one other test. You know, I did the old, pushed it all the way in to see if I can shine any flashlight around it and I don't see anything so you know what I think I'm gonna lap it and we're gonna put this together keep your fingers crossed <laughs> maybe it's gonna work maybe it's not um, how do you lap it you know suction cup that on there 
back and forth and you want to use a little compound by the way with this stuff little <laughs> less is more so to speak you only want to put it on surfaces you want to cut so you want to put it around that shiny area on the edge of it you don't want to get it all up and down the shaft and you want to make sure you clean this up really well just imagine if you can cut you know the uh, surface right here your uh, valve seat if you could cut that you really don't want it everywhere cutting everything so anyway let me give it a little bit of a lap we'll see how it looks so I <laughs> used the uh, suction cup or attempted to use this sub suction cup and the valve grinder stuff and I actually went in from the back <laughs> grabbed it with the vice grips and did the uh, spin back and forth that way so I don't know if you could see it um, I didn't get the in the olden days we used to do it the valve material was uh, softer the seat was softer and you could actually see a beautiful little line I'm not seeing that I'm kind of seeing it more generalized but I think it looks pretty good I'm uh I'm going for it I am gonna want to get a little um, lubrication particularly on the slide right there so I'm gonna hit with a little WD-40 to make sure it's all looped up but I'm going for it I'm not gonna mess with the intake valve I don't want to break what's not broken and they didn't give me the right size for that either so this is kind of a Hail Mary going with this we're gonna give it a shot though so the kit that came with the valve has slightly heavier springs um, <laughs> there's always a what do you do with this I am going with the lighter springs but you got to use the right top, the top that came with the valve, and the retainers that came with the valve. So I am using that. You notice I dropped the retainers right in. I did that deliberately because it makes it easier to put together. As you push this down, those kind of slide right into place. You remove the tension and it's all good. It's a lot easier than trying to place them once you put it all together right once you got all that junk in there it's kind of hard to place them if this was sitting in a vise it would be easier because everything would be upright and and easier and i'm kind of like <laughs> using one hand to keep everything in place and with the other hand i'm kind of tightening and doing things so um make it easy on yourself so if you line everything up and do it perfectly in alignment you push the center washer down the two retainers fall right into place you release the spring and life is good so obviously the big clamp is off right um and what i did is i like to take that and just give it a couple of taps with the hammer just to make sure everything's settled in nicely all right um the valve length everything looked good so now it's just a matter of putting it all back together again and i'm gonna do that um well i'll see how the clock runs before we uh before we bolt it back on the engine and spin it over see what kind of compression we have and all um a couple of other little tricks to see how tight it is there if you spray some WD-40 in there you could see if it runs out um, I did that it seemed to be really pretty tight hopefully all the clearances will work and uh, this valve will be a go so putting it back together again no big deal right slide the cam in boom done take the uh, <laughs> The bearing spring uh, just kind of flip it up slide that guy part way in 
put the um, the valve follower on there right the cam follower um, so that's one side slide this down make sure you preload this spring right um, because now this is pushing against the cam put this part way in drop the other one in slide it the rest of the way in and life is good so the top end is put together and make note the valves are um, loose um, if you try to put these together with these too tight it's not gonna go together right because um, there won't be any play to allow it to go together so anyway this is all set up I'm just um, gonna put it together kind of as much as I can and quite honestly I want to get this gear on here and just give it a turn to make sure the valves don't clack together, right? That would be uh, really bad. So um, I am I am going to do that. By the way, it's right near top dead center, right? Lobes down, right? So it's pretty close to top dead center. Anyway, so I'm going to give it a quick turn and make sure it all works. I have the used valve stuff here um, the springs I threw in but the other stuff is here what I'm going to do is tape that all together and just keep it on the side so I turned the cam round the valves don't hit each other I had sprayed a bunch of WD-40 in there and as I was turning them around when the exhaust valve opened it leaked out so um, this looks like a success um, I like that so the replacement valve is more substantial than the valve I took out of it that's a good thing this video is now 17 minutes long so I think I'm going to end it here uh, then I'll do a video on how to put it back together again, you know, how to time it up and so forth. Um, if I wasn't going to do it that way, I'd smash it on, <laughs> give it a cold start and then use the cold start as part of the B-roll or a compression test as part of the B-roll. And I really want to show you how to put it all back together again and that's probably going to be another 20 minute video so in the meantime i hope this helped everyone i need you all to keep your feet down your heads up and i need you all to get out there and enjoy each and every day bye now